At last, we are finally getting them. The Jintama collab with the star of it all being Jintoki. Jintoki is going to be the character that everyone is going to be after. And don't forget about Kagura. She may not seem like it, but she does not disappoint. Then our last one is Shinpachi, which you can get for free from the event. So sit back and relax, ladies and gentlemen, because there's a lot to discuss in this update, so let's just get right on into it. First off, it's the man himself, Jintoki. He's part of the protagonist, Yulis, and Heroes of Time faction. His talent, it lets him gain a stack of Samurai Spirit, which will increase his attack and decreases his damage taken when one of his team gets hurt, which will last for only 4 turns and can stack up to 4 times which cannot be dispelled. When he gets 4 stacks of Samurai Spirit, he gains Shiro Yasha, which will give him plus 2 movement, damage increased by 30%, and can attack first. When an ally dies, he'll automatically gain 4 stacks of these Samurai Spirits. And if he has already taken action, he'll act again when that ally dies. And act again has a 1 turn cooldown before he can be used again. Yeah, you can already tell from his talent alone that he's gonna be a menace. He has his 1C which has a 3 turn cooldown which will heal him for 50% of his HP and gain a stack of sugar which will last for 6 turns and is stackable. He can move 3 blocks right after to attack but if he gets 2 stacks of these then he gets sugar overdose which will reduce his movement by 1 and his damage dealt is reduced by 15%. When he acts again, his buffs do not lose their turn duration when he uses the skill, and if he's in his Shiro Yasha status, he does not gain Sugar Overdose. Completely freaking insane for a 1C skill. He has another 1C skill which isn't all that great depending on how you look at it. 15 turn cooldown and he can use it on one other ally to gain ultra protection. If they're within 3 blocks, then he guards them for physical attacks only and will heal half of his HP when he dies guarding them. It isn't really the best considering his revive only takes effect when he guards, plus Jintoki is better off being an attacker. The only thing that I see that is really beneficial is that if the ally with the ult protection dies, then that would mean that he would get his Shiro Yasha form permanently. But at the same time, you don't want your teammates to die, you want to keep them alive as much as possible. His 2C is an AoE that attacks in a straight line for 6 blocks long that disables the enemy's weapon effect. But if it is a regular enemy, then it will be attacking in minus 25% that will last for 2 turns. The damage on the skill will decrease for each enemy hit by 20% all the way up to 60%, and it will knock them back by 3 blocks. Then his 3C which has a 5 turn cooldown, it has a passive where after he takes action, and if he has not dealt damage, he'll gain idol whereas before entering battle, he deals AoE damage within one ring that wears off after using it, which has a 1 turn cooldown I believe. Before attacking, and this is the crazy part about this 3C, he dispels 5 buffs and disables all equipment effects that last for 2 turns and cannot be dispelled. But if it's a regular enemy, then all the stats is reduced by 25%. And if the enemy does not die from the skill, the skill is automatically refreshed and the cooldown of this effect is 2 turns. You guys see how broken this guy is? His long games literally was just like, screw it, give this guy everything. He has a really good 1c skill that heals him, he has a capable AoE skill that can do a whole lot of damage because of how high his attack can naturally go. Pretty decent mobility, not really the best but at least he'll get somewhere. And his 3C, oh boy, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. And this guy is pretty tanky thanks to his talent, like, I've seen him live through the Crusher and the Iron Blood Commander's 3C. And that really goes to show of, uh, not only is he a really strong attacker, but because of his talent, this guy can survive a whole lot of stuff. As if that couldn't get any better, he has a lot of good social options. And no worries, I'm not just talking about PvP. This guy is also really great for PvE as well. There might be people comparing him with Ryo, but the thing about Ryo is that he's a full on attacker and Jintoki is also one as well, but he has more utilities to perform a lot more sufficiently. But damage wise though, there might be a chance where Ryo could out damage him because of his talent debuff and he is able to do a double attack. The second character alongside Jintoki is Kagura, and like I said, she does not disappoint. She's part of the protagonist, princess, and heroes of time faction. Her talent lets her increase her attack and defense when entering battle, and afterwards, 
she gains Hungry, which can be stacked up to 7 times. However, when she reaches 5 stacks, she gains So So Hungry, which will reduce her mobility by 1. But based on her star level, depends on the chance of her getting Hungry. She has a 1C that has a 3 turn cooldown and can dispel 2 debuffs on herself and removes up to 5 stacks of Hunger and will heal her for 80% of her HP. Also, she won't get a stack of Hunger after using the skill. She has a 2C that has a 3 turn cooldown that can attack from 2 blocks. If she is attacking the enemy within one block, she can push them back by two blocks, and if she has three or less stacks of hunger, she can attack first. She has another 2C skill that has a 5 turn cooldown, which will disable the enemy's armor effects that last for two turns, but if it is a regular enemy, then it would be defense minus 25% instead. Also, if Kagura has three or less stacks of hunger, she can stun the enemy before battle. You can trust me on that part. Then after battle, the enemy is hit with healing received minus 50% that will last for two turns and cannot be dispelled. Finally, her 3C it has a six turn cooldown and has a passive, whereas if she does not have any so-so hungry, her normal attack increases by 20% and heals 30% of her HP before battle. When using the skill, it's an active skill by the way, she gains attack plus 20% and immunity to all debuffs and combative nature which will give her damage dealt plus 30% and physical damage taken is reduced by 30% which will last for 2 turns. After using a skill to deal damage after using the skill, the skill's cooldown is reduced by 5 turns. Also you can move 4 blocks afterwards to attack when using the skill. And keep in mind that she gains 3 stacks of hunger after 2 turns when the effect of the skill ends. Another amazing strong attacker, you can't really go wrong with building her up. She has a lot of benefits just like Jintoki which makes them insanely good. But the thing about her is that you do have to keep track of her hungry stacks as that will give her extra effects when she uses her skills. And you also have to make sure she doesn't have too many otherwise she becomes more slower. And honestly, it's not all that bad when you compare it to Jintoki and his sugar overdose effect where it not only reduces his mobility but it makes him do less damage. And you do want her to be at least at 4 stars so that she's a little bit more usable because her at 3 stars means that she will just keep on constantly getting those stacks of hungry. As long as you're able to keep managing that, she's really reliable to use. She also has access to a cavalry class that can use unicorns. So she can actually have a lot more mobility than Jintoki. Finally, our last character to go over, Shinpachi, which is a SR that you can get for free from the event. He's part of the protagonist and Heroes of Time faction. For his talent, after taking action, one enemy within a certain range will receive a certain number of debuffs, depending on his star level. Before he enters battle, he inflicts the enemy with three random debuffs. And if the enemy has at least five debuffs, then the enemies will do 10% more damage, but they receive 20% increased damage taken. A bit interesting, but if the enemy gets something like attack and int decrease as well as damage dealt decrease, then the 10% damage increase bonus that the enemy can have against Shinpachi becomes almost meaningless. But of course, if he gets attacked by a range attack, then that 20% increased damage taken on the enemies is also meaningless. For his unique skills, they're stupidly good and hilarious. This once he is a passive that reduces his damage taken by 20% and when he attacks in battle, the enemy he attacks will make him, himself, will make him move 3 blocks away from that enemy. And I'm pretty sure it makes him move, like I'm 70% sure on that one. His 2C is also a passive whereas before being forced into battle, there's a 20% chance for both sides to not attack which will have a 1 turn cooldown before it can take effect again. He can use his skill to heal himself to full HP and will not be able to attack or be targeted by the enemies which will only last for 1 turn and cannot be dispelled. For the role that he does, this skill isn't half bad. But keep in mind that he will take damage from like AoE attacks and he'll still take damage whenever he guards his teammates. Allows his 3C which of course has a passive that has his damage taken reduced by 15% and guards nearby allies. He can teleport to the selected ally within 5 blocks and give them AoE damage taken reduced by 20% and immunity to debuffs which will last for 2 turns. As well as increase his guard range by 2. For a tank, he really isn't all that bad, a free tank to say the least. With all the other skills that he can bring, he can also play the role as an attacker. He's kind of like Kurabara in a sense, but Kurabara is more better off as an attacker rather than a tank because he doesn't have a whole lot of things that help him survive better compared to Shinpachi. Shinpachi has stuff like giving debuffs, skills to take in less damage, and a skill that heals him while also making the enemy have a hard time hitting him when using said skill. Also, he becomes much more beneficial when his 3C unlocks. Other than 
that, you'll have to rely on his Iron Fist guard skill, which only guards physical attacks. Do I think he's the best tank out there? No, not in the slightest. But he can be a pretty solid tank for the newer players coming to the game, since you can get him to 5 stars almost immediately by farming his event. Plus, if you get Matthew's faction buff, then it will help a lot. There will also be an equipment banner which usually drops 2 weeks later after any major update. The first equipment we got is a weapon that increases defense by 10% and before starting battle, has a 100% chance to deal fixed damage based on the character's defense. Really useful on tanks, not just on tanks but it can also be used on attackers like Kagura since her defense can already go so high. But it's mainly used for stuff like breaking the enemy's last threats and stuff like that for PvP. Second is the armor which increases HP by 10%. When you're not in mixed forces, the defense and magic defense increases by 8%, which is just alright. Not really the best thing in the world. The third is a helmet that also increases HP by 10%, and after taking action, you can give a nearby ally plus 20% defense and immunity to curse wounding and cannot be buffed that lasts for one turn. The cannot be buffed is really great, but the curse of wounding is also great, but you don't really see those stuff nowadays. But still, it's not a bad one. The fourth and final one is the accessory which will increase your int by 8% and whenever you select the enemy to attack them, you have a 70% chance to reduce their magic defense by one turn. Like with most equipment banner in my opinion, there's really only two that you can go for. The first one being the weapon for reasons I mentioned before and the helmet for your healers to apply immunity to cannot be buffed. But those kind of stuff isn't really an issue all that much since not many characters can do that kind of stuff. But it can happen though. These equipments aren't anything too crazy so you can easily skip this. Plus they do get added later on as a rare drop when the banner disappears. With the addition of these comes with two new exclusive equipment. The first is for Christian, which is a helmet that increases her defense and magic defense by 5% as well as being immune to displacement effects. When she activates her revive, she takes the equinox effect. And some of you guys may not have seen what this is and some of you guys may have rarely ever seen this. But this is the effect that she gains whenever it's just her on the field and when she loses all her effulgence. But what the equinox does is that it gives 5% increase to all stats and when she is forced into battle, her damage dealt increases by 10% and heals 20% of HP after battle. The second is for Gustav which looks to be a helmet. And whenever she has a skill that's on a cooldown, then her damage dealt is increased and when being forced into battle by range attack, she deals fixed damage to them. This one isn't really amazing. I mean yeah, it's her exclusive but the stuff that this one gives it just really isn't worth your time to pick up. I definitely recommend picking up Christian exclusive equipment since it'll just be good all around. As far as new content goes, of course we got the farmable collab event where you can play a bunch of times and all you're doing is just collecting points for some rewards as well as unlocking Shinpachi and getting him to 5 stars. Then we got the Dimensional Expedition so if you haven't already, make sure to get yourself in a guild before the update goes live so that you can get some rewards for doing them. And once the update does go live, you won't be able to join the guild. Or I think once it actually does start because the first week is usually the preparation phase and then the second week it actually does start. A week later after the update, there will be a wish banner which only includes characters from Languisa 1, 2, and 3. A bait banner, although they could be good news for some people that need character bonds. For the newer players, I would just advise getting Jintoki and Kagura. Jintoki is the main one that you want and Kagura is pretty amazing as well but you don't really exactly have to get her. For the new new players, you do have the two character wish summon. I forgot what it actually was so you can also invest your crystals and vouchers on that as well. For the new skins that we are getting, let's go over the Echo Light first. The main star of this collab, Jintoki. Then my god does he look cool. I'd prefer this look all day every day compared to his normal one. The other Echo of Light skin is for Kagura and like with Jintoki, I prefer this one any time of the day. Gotta say, they both looking pretty fire. After that, we do got some rerun skins, the summer theme one and the school theme ones. To be honest, I'm not even sure if we are even getting these because at that time, the Brenda and Suzette skins were new because they were seasonal themed skins. And I'm pretty sure that's how it went for the school theme ones as well or if they just decided to bring them back. So I'm not sure if we'll see them come back for global. And speaking of, there's gonna be two new soldier skins. One for the heavy infantry and the royal cavalry that will cost 28 skin vouchers. And also there will be a login bonus which is just only 7 days but you can get some basic rewards like gold, trinity vouchers, and some enchanting scrolls. As for the macho lotto, it's for older licorice. Another great design by their art team. This one looks really nice. 
This is something about it. It's just so angelic. Eh? Eh? See what I did there? Oh, brother, this guy stinks! And that just about wraps up everything about what you need to know in this update. I'm really excited about this whole thing, and I'm sure a lot of you guys as well. These two characters are definitely worth their crystals and vouchers, whether if you're new to the game or not. But feel free to let me know down in the comments what your guys' plan are and what you guys are mainly excited for. I definitely can't wait for both Jintoki and Kagura. I already got the gears ready for them. That's how excited I am for this update. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more, and yeah, thanks for watching. You fellow Z.